Hi everyone, my name is Amy DiPlacido and I'm the Curator of Exhibitions at San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles. Thank you so much for joining us. This is our first Artist Spotlight series by video and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome Victoria Martinez as our first guest. Victoria Martinez is an interdisciplinary artist from the Pilsen neighborhood of Chicago. She has participated in over 80 group shows in the last decade, received notoriety for activating neighborhoods by teaching youth art classes and working in public art. She works in a range of different mediums, including textiles, painting, screen printing, and installation. Recent awards include an artist in residence at the Arts Incubator at the University of Chicago, as well as the Macmillan Center Field Research Fellowship. She received her BFA from Minneapolis College of Art and Design and MFA from Yale University School of Art. She will have a solo exhibition at SJMQT next year as well. Welcome, Victoria. Hello, thank you for having me today. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, first of all, congratulations on graduating from Yale's MFA program. Thank you. So uh, I was wondering if we could talk a little bit about your work. And whenever I look at your work, I just want to run into the art studio and create something of my own. It has an effortless and freedom to it. Yet a large part of your practice is research-based. Can you speak to that duality? Yeah, um, so I love to look at textiles closely, either like in at textile libraries or um, meaning that I get to see and not really touch, but kind of use like a microscope to, to look closely at the thread counts and the different dyes um, and symbols. And then I also um, like to travel um, to look at different museums that are dedicated to, to textiles. So, um, I also create abstract paintings and um, different forms of, of, pa of painting with different materials um, that are textile based as well. Um, but it's more like a loose idea and um, it's more to me, it's organic in the sense that I am inspired in borrowing um, from textiles. Um, but there's also different um, facets of that type of research that I do. Um, like I was do, um, doing a lot of research at, through, the, through the University of Chicago about the African presence in Mexico. Um, and from there, looking through different um, archives that exist, um, I started to then also get into the Gies Bend culture of quilts. Um, and then also looking and traveling to different parts of Latin America, such as Mexico and Peru and Guatemala, El Salvador, um, to get some sort of experience that relates to textiles. So um, right now, since I just graduated on, from grad school, like I, um, and I'm in a stage where I am thinking and reflecting about everything that I've done in the like, last eight to 10 years. Um, and it's a transition um, stage for me. So I'm, you know, at a moment where I am exploring again, so. Yeah, and I should say that we met about six years ago as faculty members at Interlochen Center for the Arts too. And I just remember you would teach all day and then you'd be in your studio all night. And I had that thought like, when does this girl sleep? <laughs> I never. <laughs> no. um, yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, we met in Michigan like six years ago, and that was such a magical place to be like near Traverse City. And, you know, I never got to experience that before, um, and I loved it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like that's like, <laughs> I guess during grad school, like, all that energy that I would that I was dedicating to, to making now it was dedicated to like thinking and like um, kind of receiving feedback and reflecting on your current exploration. So you know I'm really happy that I get to to like kind of like redirect my energy now. Um, so I'm excited to get back to making at that pace. 
Yeah, we're in Silicon Valley, and I recently learned a little bit of coding during Shelter in Place. Oh, okay. And yeah, it's like you spend maybe like 90% of your time thinking about what you want the code to look like, and maybe 10% of the time actually like typing in the code. And I do feel like the MFA grad school experience is something like that, where you're looking around a lot, you're doing a lot of research, and then you spend um, still a lot of time in the studio. Um, but I think that once you're not in school anymore, you don't have some of those restraints, too. Yeah. That's yeah, true. well, I'd love to take a look about at your work a little bit more. Okay, that sounds good. This is a piece that I created during my first year at Yale, and I um, was visiting my family a lot, or maybe like once or twice during the semester. They, um, they live in um, El Paso, in Texas, which is like a border town to Mexico. And I, you know, it's, it's a desert town and it's completely different than, than Chicago or the East Coast. Um, so what I would do, um, I, I would walk every day. I would take walks around my parents' neighborhood um, and cross over the border, spend some time in Mexico and then walk back. Um, because my parents like live like maybe like I would say like two miles away from the actual border. Um, so I started taking photographs of like um, touristy shops and also architecture um, and then different different types of bricks and colors um, and then the back side of this um, it's a pattern that I photographed from a residential home in in Texas. So you know, I, I like the duality, and I find it interesting of like how there's a um, land and landscape, and then there's two different sets of politics um, and ideas. But it's an abstraction of my um, walks, which I would say they're like a ritual because I would do it every day when I was visiting them. So then um, during the graduate experience, like I was, um, you know, I was, I come from a like public art background and a community-based art background. Um, so I wanted to interact somehow with my peers. Um, and it was challenging because, um, you know, it, like I was used to working with people all the time and creating works of art to transform spaces. But then every, like, I feel like the, the thought process for me was an, like a whole different experience being a student. Um, so my, you know, my idea during this time was like, hey, okay, so I can't, like I have to make art somehow on my own um, and not work exactly with a community of people because I'm not a teaching artist anymore. I'm, I'm a student again. Um, so then I thought, let me just make a double-sided painting and I'll cut a door through it. And you know, it's, 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 you know, it's two dimensional, but the fact that it's um, draping or that it's um, hanging from, from a different structure makes it a painting. And um, I feel like it's, Part in a way it's like a painting and also it can work as a wall because I can continue my goal is to continue to make more paintings that are two-dimensional create doors and then um, kind of fill up a, a gallery space so people can walk through each painting and it could be interactive and you can also see a contemporary painting um, and it's also kind of playing off like architecture to create environments inside of a of my environment. So. Yeah, I see a lot of influences of American quilts here. I also see a lot of influence of Latin American weaving, maybe even some Mali mud cloth in your work for all the textile lovers out there too. And in some ways it's like you're making textiles about textiles in some way. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> abstracted textiles and um, paintings. Um, and then this piece I created in, uh, um, in January. Um, I started in December or in November, like creating this project and, um, 
you know, it's, I want to say it's over 30 feet wide. Um, I, again, was like trying to, to incorporate like the architecture, kind of like considering like the, the walls. Um, like at first, I, these were two different paintings, like um, the turquoise painting on the right was a smaller painting. And then the painting on the left with like the brown and the green and the yellow and orange, that was a whole different um, painting on its own. But then it became one because I was working closely with the with a mentor and um, we started talking about like the corners of the spaces, something that I never really consider when I'm working on, on projects. Um, so it's a, this project is more like, again, like another abstraction that I was kind of referring to um, some of my travels to Oaxaca in Mexico. Um, I spent some time there last summer going to libraries and meeting people and studying textiles and um, art and I also like started looking at metal a lot to like there's a lot of um like you know like small mom and pop shops or establishments and like I um would notice that some of the metal pieces would have like a painting of a rose and it would be like Rosa's bakery and then someone else would buy it like a um a, a tire shop would buy the flower shop and instead of re or throwing away the the old flower um advertisement that they would like paint over it and kind of like drill through it or kind of erase what was once there but then there's some sort of dialogue going on in my opinion with the painting and with the uh, material so that, that this bigger painting that i'm showing you now it's kind of based on like metal but it's it's pretty much fabric so you know before uh, I graduated like I want my goal was to like start painting with nothing but metal and incorporating fabric somehow through the metal but then COVID happened and I stopped getting access to the shops um, so I'm still like thinking about this piece and like still thinking about how I can start working with metal um, and fabric together um, in some sort of like public setting yeah I've always found that metal and textiles have the most interesting juxtaposition too yeah. it's like you almost need one different material other than textiles for it to really harmonize together <laughs> yeah i mean i think it, it'll be a good um direction for me right now to like to start exploring that um even deeper yeah, and because you were graduating from a painting and printmaking department, do you feel like that was informing the dialogue versus if you were to be you know, surrounded by a group of textile artists? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, um, it's interesting that you asked that because this painting that's on the screen right now, that painting was made in a textile co um, course that was dedicated to nothing but like weaving and sewing and like um, painting on fabric. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I was in the painting program, but I'd say like, yeah, they, I feel like um, painting is held, you know, at, at a higher, at a higher um, position. And, um, but I think, I think it was also a very open space or a very open program where, um, the professors welcomed like various types of like fabrics or um, materials and um, ideas of what a painting can be. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess right now, like, I again, like it's like transition. I'm still transitioning, uh, and I like want to do reread all my notes to see like how my work. Um, can can move forward so um but yeah but this painting here i it's on silk it, it was a, a shirt and then i created um a frame made out of wood and then i stretched the the silk on top of the frame and i love the draping and i i just love how like the lighting hits the fibers of, of silk and then um, one of my professors taught me how to paint on silk 
and I loved it. So and like I have two different examples of like text and in terms of like thinking about um, thinking about the audience, I um, I like to be bilingual because I grew up bilingual um, at home, speaking Spanish and English. Um, and I, you know, like to try my best to connect to many people. So um, I also see like, including text, um, there's two different ways that I think about it right now. One is like kind of um, working with like al alphabets or found text and abstracting that to create like a new language, a new language with the actual alphabets, but also like um, through painting um, and mark making um, and layering with collage and like textiles and, and, and fabric. Um, but then I also think about like, um, let's see, I think like abstract painting and also um, as a, I see my art as a way of, um, being like an educational tool or an educational uh, method um, that I like to include or try to include in contemporary art. Um, so that's one example that I created um, out of a map or I made a map based on um, two different forms of research. One was a situation as international map. Um, it was like a map depicting like a fragmented um, Paris and then I also went to Mexico and I was photographing different parts of the Sun Pyramid at Teotihuacan, which is outside of Mexico City. Um, so then I kind of played with the idea of the map and the idea of, of, um, of like different ruins and pyramids in Mexico kind of being fragmented. And then it, in my imagination, it's um, kind of reimagining what a, a historical site can look like. So this is a map form and it's, you know, fairly small, but um, it's something that I feel can expand into like an actual live map um, or a series of maps or like land art and sculpture and painting um, out, outdoors. Um, so yeah, I hope we can, I can, I can do that. <laughs> like I would love to see this map come to life or a form of it come to life. So. Um, and then on my website, um, there's some paintings. They're a little bit older, like maybe four years ago, but these were made out of um, Tyvek um, advertisements. And then I, I painted on top of it and restitched it and collaged it. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it, this was a, a, during a time where, I mean, I was being more like fluid with layering um, paper, like different types of materials. Um, and it was a lot of fun, um, but I love working with like Tyvek because it's an archival material and you can keep it outdoors for a pretty long time, but you can also protect like different materials such as your fabric or um, you can work with art or on art with it, so yeah. Yeah, I guess you have a history of taking artwork that you make and actually putting it outside surrendering it to the natural elements. Are you still creating public art in this manner? Um, a little bit, not too much. Um, I recently make a, I made a piece outside, um, but in Pilsen, but like, you know, it's, um, it's kind of like a sketch. It's more like work, I, I it's like with like paint and like cement, um, but, um, I'm thinking, I mean, I'm also working on like a banner piece um, for a library um, that's made out of fabric and it's going to be in the public setting, but it's indoors. But it, like outdoors, more like, yeah, it's something that I want to get back into and um, grow with like uh, architects or engineers. Um, so, you know, I, I have to, I have to get on it and work. Yeah, well, thank you so much for sharing your work with us, too. And if anybody wanted to see what you're up to, where can people find more about your work? Well, my website's on. Like, we're already on it, victoria-martinez.com. And then I also have an Instagram page with some of my pieces and kind of like life events and kind of experiments and um, 
you know, just different places that I visited in the past. So I welcome you to visit both. Well, very cool. Thank you so much again. This has yeah, been great. You. It was amazing. So thank you so much, Amy. Yeah, yeah.